A snowy, happy Thursday to you. At least it's a uh, snowy Thursday here. Here in western Wisconsin, a little bit east of Minneapolis, St. Paul, we got about another 12 inches of snow overnight. That's on top of about six inches that we cleared yesterday. So it's a real weird, um, it's a weird weather system hanging out right over this area. So um, looking out the window now, although I... Uh, Although I cleared my parking lot here at the shop not that long ago, I can no longer see it because it's snowing more. So what a great day to be in the shop. And in the shop, we're gonna talk about jointing or using your jointer to create rabbit joints. So speaking of joints, one of the things that, um, one of the articles that we produced a while ago was about choosing the right joint based on what it is that you're trying to do. So in other words, like how do you match up? When do I need a rabbit? When do I need a dado? When do I need a dovetail? Mortise and tenon. Um, so that PDF, if you scroll down just a little bit or a new thing from us, you can scan the QR code that's on your screen. Um, that's gonna get you to that PDF. And then it's another just, it's a good document to just have in your library so that when you're making those decisions, when you're making your project design decisions, um, you'll have some help on what direction to go. Uh, additionally, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. I'm kind of on the tail end of a cold and um, it's pretty deep here in my throat right now. So I've got a lozenge in there and uh, hopefully I can talk for the next 30 minutes, uh, a little Gatorade nearby to wash down the uh, so hopefully I can uh, I can power through what we're about to do. Uh, part of the key to jointer or to rabbiting on your jointer, I'll get it right before we're done. Part of the key to being able to do this is your jointer has to have what's called a rabbiting ledge, and I'm going to show you what that is on this machine. If it doesn't, you can't do this. Um, Good question, why would I do this? Why am I looking to rabbit on a joiner? Couple of reasons for it. One is, you'll see in a second, it's crazy easy to set up here. So when you look at alternatives like, I put a router bit in a router table, I put a dado head in a table saw. Um, I would say in my world, if I'm doing a rabbit or two, I'm likely to do it here on the jointer instead of a table saw or a router table because it's so fast, it's so easy to set up. You also get really, really good cut quality off of the knives. You'll see when I show you under the hood here, this particular knife is carbide insert, helical head. We can do this whether it's straight steel knives, helical head, whatever you've got under the hood here, you're gonna be able to do this technique. Um, so cut quality is great. Um, I would say actually cut quality from this is superior to what I get even off my really good dado head, um, but similar to what you would get from a router bit because we've got a pretty similar cutting action between a router bit and um, the jointer. The other thing I like about it is that if you need to do a rabbit that's kind of funky, like if you own a rabbiting bit, it's got a ball bearing on it and maybe it's a 3 8 rabbit bit. It's a half inch rabbit bit. What if you need 10 millimeters instead of three eighths? What if you need 12 millimeters instead of half inch? So with the joiner, you'll see we can custom produce the depth of that cut. And what I really like it for is what we're about to do, which is doing a wide rabbit with a narrow shoulder. So and what you're looking at right here um, in the glare of the light, let me get it in the right spot. That's a little better. The X, the X is where material is going to come out. That little, that little line is what, um, that's the shoulder we're going to leave behind. So that really excessively wide rabbit, great application for a jointer. Um, joiners unplug. So jointer ledge, or I'm sorry, God, rabbiting ledge. Here we go. That is that right there. That's the rabbiting ledge. So not every joiner has an arm that projects and kind of catches up again to the outfeed table here. When the infeed table goes up and down, the infeed table here goes up and down, this ledge is attached to the infeed table. It's independent of the outfeed table. So 
you'll see as I'm making adjustments, you'll see this surface lowering as we go. Now making adjustments. Commonly when we use a joiner, we've got an adjustment there that allows us to set depth of cut. And normally what I would do if I was just jointing edges is I would set this for a 32nd, maybe a 16th of an inch. That's controlled by turning this. And that's where it stays. And if we're making multiple passes, you make a pass, you remove a 16th, you make a pass, you remove a 16th. When we're doing rabbits, what we'll have to do is set depth of cut. I'm gonna do about an eighth of an inch. Set depth of cut for the first pass. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna set depth of cut for the next pass. Then I'm gonna do that again and I'm gonna set depth of cut for the third pass. Honestly, the ability to rabbit is the reason why depth of cut goes so deep. You're never gonna face joint or edge joint and take off a half inch, but you might rabbit and take off a half inch. So let me go back to my starting point. Eighth inch depth of cut, that's gonna be our first pass. Now for setup, we've gotta come back to the cutter head and I'm gonna move the camera to get you in a better position. So walk this way. A little knob of wood on the floor that's stopping me, there we go. So the, the business end of what we're looking for now is, and again, jointer unplugged, is the edge of the cutter head right there. And again, in this case, segmented carbide, but it's the corner that I'm concerned about. I don't care that it's segmented carbide. That corner is the outside of my cut. If those were high-speed steel knives, same deal. I'd be looking for the corner of the knife, and that tells me when I do this, where to position the fence. I'm gonna bring the fence over until the layout line on my material is right on the corner of the knife. Right there. And I'm off behind the scenes here, kinda. I'm locking my fence in place. That's gotta set up for a first pass. So let me zoom out, tilt up. Sorry about that. And I'll just check quickly for questions here before I cut. Okay. So we've got a handful it looks like. Paul says, my question for rabbiting a joint involves whether or not to use the piece I need to screw to another piece by tracing it before cutting it, then screwing it to the other for a stronger fit with glue. Mm, I don't get the question. If you're rabbiting a joint, I don't know where in there one would be screwing another piece on. Because the, the rabbit we're about to create, little L-shaped relief, different from a dado. Dado is a U-shaped relief. So when we cut the rabbit, we're creating that L. And then whatever we're putting in there, whether you know it's a picture frame and glass and a picture are going into that rabbit, or it's a joint and another component's going to fit in there, I don't know. I don't see where one would be screwing scrap into that. Um, then this question we already answered from Bill. Does it make a difference if you have that 
that works either way. So I think we are, yep, caught up on questions. So I'm gonna get the camera back down here where you can look right at the cut, because it's pretty cool when you can see it form. And then again, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna make a pass, and then I'm gonna reach back here on the joiner, and I'm gonna change that depth of cut. Then we're gonna make another pass. Then I'm gonna do one more change, then we're gonna make another pass. And that way you'll see that, um, you'll see that rabbit fully evolve on the edge of this board. Just gonna double check my setup, make sure I'm in the right spot. That looks bueno. Plug the jointer back in. Get where you, where you can see. And I'll show you after, um, yeah, I'm gonna leave you about there. After I make a pass, I'll show you what that, edge looks like at that stage of the game. Pass number one. There's the ledge right there that we're leaving behind. Increase step to cut. And again, increase step to cut. So there's the rabbit getting this in the light where you can see it without being glared out. The small ledge we left behind, the big rabbit. And again, just from, um, I mean, even though I'm talking you through this, it's only a little bit after 11. So start to finish, set up, making the cut, cut quality on that pine is really, really, really good. No chatter marks. As I said, it better than what I would get off of um, my eight inch dado stack on the table saw, about the same as what we would get off a router bit. So very fast setup, really good cut quality, and kind of a, you know, that's kind of a funky rabbit that we're making there. So very easy way to produce that really wide, really deep rabbit. So I'm so sorry, I don't know what's causing, I can see the outbound signal is blacking out um, twice here. I don't know what's making that happen. I'll have to check the, uh, I'll have to check that cable coming off of my camera. Okay. Um, so a couple things, um, Max has put a link for that uh, wood joint guide I was talking about right with right, right into the chat roll. So you can click on that, grab that PDF. Jeff asks, how much are you increasing the depth of cut for each pass? Um, it's, I'm doing an eighth of an inch per pass in this application. It's pine, so it's pretty soft. If it was hard maple, maybe I'd be doing a little less. Uh, Michael says, as long as you're rabbiting on a joiner, how about tapered legs? Yeah, so it's another interesting, things, um, interesting thing. Um, there are a lot of ways to make tapered legs. One of them is by controlling your passes on a jointer. Um, and that's a, it's a cool way to do it. Cut quality is really good. The downside is it takes a lot of passes. Um, but um, 
you end up with a really good surface finish when you're done. So it's another thing, you know, like rabbits on the joiner, um, knowing you can taper legs on a bandsaw, on a table saw, on a jointer, um, it just gives you one more thing in your pocket for an approach when you're doing your woodworking. Um, Tope says, uh, he's in Edmonton or she, are there dangers to running a table saw and other tools in cold temperatures, say minus 30 to minus 40 Celsius, garage is not insulated? Um, maybe. Um, you've got most tools are based on having some kind of rubber or silicone drive belt. My biggest concern would be getting that belt to turn on the first go round. Um, that, it, you know, it's in, in the cold, it's kind of assume that oval type shape. And when you're asking it to roll over the pillow or pulleys when it's really, really, really cold, um, it might not initially want to roll over those pulleys. So um, I don't know, as, as long as it goes, you know, as long as the saw blade starts to run, starts to spin, then I think you would be okay. Um, but um, getting that initial startup could be a challenge. Uh, could you do the rabbit on the flat side as well in an edge? Yep. Where do you place the weight from your hands on the rabbit ledge? So it, yeah, I, I do this. I do this rabbiting really the same way I do an edge when I'm jointing an edge, which is um, you really don't need down pressure. You shouldn't be leaning on your jointer. So all I'm really doing is resting my hands on the top of the board and then feeding across and out to the outfeed table. And honestly, that's all it takes. Um, so it's not, you know, again, because the, um, because the jointer ledge is aligned with the infeed table, it's when I start the cut, this, like the first, let me look here. The first six inches of this is on the jointer ledge. So I do need to make sure I'm, on the jointer ledge, you know what I mean? I gotta make sure that edge is down when I start, and then you're gonna be okay. And then from there, I'm sharing the pressure between my hands. But again, I hate to even use the word pressure because it's so light. It's really just, a, excuse me, really just the weight of your hands. But you do need to make sure that that small ledge you're creating is on the jointer ledge. The shoulder you're creating here is on the jointer ledge, rabbiting ledge. By the time we're done, I'll get it right. Um, so while I'm just kind of tap dancing to see if any other questions come in. Um, so not today, but a couple weeks from today will be our normal Thursday um, Q&A. And then I've mentioned this a couple times, watch your email. Jimmy DiResta is gonna be back here in March and our, our Thursday live is gonna be a little bit funky. We're coordinating it around Jimmy's schedule. So it's gonna be later than it normally is and it's typically the live is the second Thursday of the month. I think we're not gonna be on the second Thursday. It's a different Thursday. So um, again, just watch your email, look for those announcements. I know it's gonna be later in the day. We usually do that live Q and A at four, but we're still gonna be shooting video at four. So um, it's gonna be more of an early evening kind of a thing. But again, watch your, watch your emails and then you'll get a notification of when Jimmy and I will be doing our live Q and A. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, the last time we had Jimmy here, we got, a, he is great on camera. We got a lot, a lot of content shot. And um, he and I are cut from the same cloth in a lot of ways. So it was very fun. There was uh, a great deal of joking going on. If you've not seen it already, I know I've talked about this. We did a video together, which is about making a knife from an old saw blade. And um, on that video, there's some good natured ribbing back and forth as we each work on our knives. It's a, it's a very fun watch. That video is a very fun watch. All right, well, it looks like we're set. I'm just gonna check uno mas tiempo, make sure. 
Yeah, we're set on questions. So um, again, sorry for my voice. Uh, I'm on the tail end, I hope, of a pretty bad cold. And um, I'm going to I'm gonna try to not think about going out and running the snowblower again. But that's what I'll be doing later today. Have a great day. Don't forget to grab that um, guide, that download about knowing which joint to use for your projects. It's going to help you out as you're in your project design. And I will see you the next time we do this.